and everything on each one of them. But I did try to put the pictures there so you can go back and look at them. There's also uh, another post that has links to all the film footage that you see in there. Um, now, if you click on some of those videos, they may be 20 minutes long, and what you saw was just a tiny snippet kind of in the middle. But it is there for anyone that wants to see it. All right. <laughs> Hi, um, I was just curious about the newspaper clippings. You had so many of them in there. Where, where did you find most of those? Was that microfilm or online or what? Actually through newspapers.com, which does require a subscription, and that's kind of why I tried to screenshot them and let you see them. Like I said, I didn't take the time to document exactly the dates and stuff. Some things you can find through Google. Um, I grew up doing the microfilm thing and doing the research. This goes way faster than it used to. Um, but it is ever evolving. Um, every day, people are digitalizing more and more things. So I don't know that this is the end of what we can find. Um, I did learn a lot about how things used to go viral, which was wire services. And so you could see an article posted and it would hit all the major cities at the exact same time. I was just wondering how you sifted out um, the way credibility changed through the years. Like obviously there were uh, like capitalistic reasons for care to be uh, given at the boom of the hermit crab sales. Um, so how did you find the um, progress to more suitable care methods? You kind of have to timeline it as you're digging. And like with the clubs, I think it was more small business down at the beach. But then when you start getting into people who want to wholesale, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Um, and, and, but then, um, and you, you definitely could see that because, um, again, you had the clubs down in Florida, and then the next thing you know, you had people from like the East Coast that were traveling down there. Oh, that's a really good idea. We should take it back. And then you start to see the wholesalers there, which I was always fascinated. Um, I, I went to Boston and, and Maine many years ago and why you would buy a non-native species animal that can't live outside where you vacation, how that's a souvenir, I don't know. I, I didn't follow that logic very well. Behind you, Stacy. I would just like to hear more about how you got into this and this particular topic and why it interested you. Um, I guess I'm a historian by nature. Like I said, I, I grew up doing family research, um, spent a lot of time at the local library going through census records. Um, I had a lot of vacations that included going to cemeteries. Um, so this is my childhood, it is, is the historical aspect of it. And um, I also have an appreciation for vintage things. And so sea monkeys kind of drew, drew me in. And then um, I have been helping uh, some homeschool students with science classes. Some of the moms are terrified of high school science classes. I'm not, but I'm not a strong science student either. And so learning about sea monkeys, oh, they're also crustaceans. Oh, isopods, they're also crustaceans, you know. And so you just kind of start to blend some of it. And I know my husband says like with miniatures, I can factor that into hermit crabs. So yeah, so definitely I had an interest and in, we were discussing the, um, the crazy crab ad that was in the comic books and Mary asked me if I wanted to do the topic and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I was kind of rushed for time. So I think we, we found a lot of the how and why it happened. Don't know that we have all the who yet. I have some of the big names, but there's still probably some more stories out there. 
Stacy. So um, I was just wondering that um, after the the students like made it so you couldn't um, take them from Florida, where did the wholesalers start getting crabs after that? From what I can tell, the Caribbean islands and Puerto Rico, um, and it was really cheap for them to get them there. People could just go out and, as they said, snatch up hermit crabs. So they would take hundreds a day and ship them out. Um, again, most of my research was focused on Florida and the purple pinchers. I did see them talk about the South Americans, and those of you that are really into this, remember, this is day 300 for me having hermit crabs. I'm assuming they're talking about maybe Ecuadorians. Um, that, that was kind of something different. Um, purple pinchers, though, tend to be just south of Florida. They just went right past the line. Okay, we can't get them from here. We'll go a little bit further. I was wondering, do they have any like lobbyists that actually go out to make sure that this... Yeah, that from what I can tell, I mean, you have these organizations like Lycos and PETA that are, are pushing things. But again, I was surprised to find out the, that like carnivals uh, have lobbyists. So you, you have industries that have money that you're fighting against. Um, I think if you can find people that have been affected by being lied to, that, that's the quickest way to get advocates. Um, again, Everybody loves pets. I love pets. Advocate for pets. But it's really disturbing when you see that there's no consumer protection either and people are flat out lying. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I know why I'm here. This is because of my daughter. She's a crab lover. Um, I was very interested in the history of how many crabs a year have been sold since the 70s and then decreased to 263, if I remember, in a t uh, 2010. Can you tell me how many crabs are being sold nowadays? Do we have statistics? There isn't a lot of regulation. And a lot of the numbers that you see in the news articles are self-reported by these companies. So it's hard to say, are they telling the truth? Are they underestimating? So they, and that's scary at over 10 million that they would underestimate or are they overestimating? And how many crabs die in the process that don't get sold? So it's, it's very hidden and murky to, to get solid data. Brianna Lamb is asking, did the momentum for hermit crab awareness started by the kids gain steam after that, even though they were still offered as pets, or did the awareness sort of fizzle out after that until modern day? Really, the awareness uh, fizzled out until the internet. Um, even though you did have wire services that would repeat the same article, basically, um, once PETA could get the behind the scenes footage and also people started filming the hermit crabs at the mall. And so that got news out to a lot of people really fast. There. Um, yeah, it was pretty staggering to hear the large amounts of uh, hermit crabs that would go be sold every year. Um, do we have any indication of like what, how that affected ecosystems, you know, 10 million getting, being taken away. I'm very curious what the effects of that. I'm not was. sure, but they were even asking that in the 70s because they are the clean, cleanup crew. Um, and even though we've learned like breeding in captivity, okay, you're gonna have thousands and thousands of eggs and you may only end up with a few hermit crabs. I don't think there's enough study to even say 
that it's any different in the wild. Um, so even though people think there's a ton of them, it is questionable when you're talking about that many being removed. And also the shell thing, I've learned through this, uh, people taking seashells, how that impacts the environment. Um, beaches, I don't think, have the, the same um, kind of, you know, um, atmosphere of uh, take only memories, leave only footprints, like we do with the national parks. And so the beaches have been kind of, you know, scavenged over by humans and to the point that uh, also most of the beaches that people go to they have to import all the sand continually and whether a beach gets more sand is determined whether or not it's economically viable through tourism dollars so beach is a very interesting place I'm not a beach person so this has been kind of interesting for me as well I'm like didn't know that so add to that that we do know in Bermuda that that population is down to like 150 individual hermit crabs in Bermuda and they joined us last year at CrabCon to talk about the plight of the crabs in Bermuda and ways that we could help them so you can find that on the YouTube channel. Too. And the thing that surprised me is how much circus stuff kept coming up uh, with different companies and toy companies. And that's something I think we can all kind of keep an eye out for because uh, even Von Braunhut, his grandfather was um, a toy maker. So again, the, the perspective is, is very different when you're coming from a toy company or a circus. It's not for the animals and it's not for the people either. Um, and, and so a lot of what they said was not true. So anyone else? I think just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is about the last question we can take to keep going. But um, I wanted to thank you for this incredible presentation that just brought all this information together that even those of us who've been doing this forever had no clue. This is going to be a great resource for us, for the crabs, for <laughs> everything. But as someone who's done a number of presentations myself, my question for you is, what did you take from doing this? Like, what was your takeaway? What, what, anything on any level? Like, what special insight or feeling did you get? Again, that it's not done. Um, I was telling y'all earlier, um, the footage interviewing the pet store employee was the last media I found. And it had only been on the internet for about five months. And it came from... I just constantly would rearrange words, add in different words in my search term, and then just boom, one day it was there. So it's kind of like um, discovering stuff in people's attics and closets and stuff. There's still more information out there. Like I said, the story's not done. I think there's a lot more that we will probably discover and find out. So definitely you can email me. Like I said, you can go to the uh, Blogspot page and look at those newspaper articles and it might trigger something in a conversation that you've had with somebody and you're like, oh wait, I remember them talking about these people over here. And I was really glad that I got to like uh, see the clove story because they keep closing seashell shops and that was actually family history. So I wanted to get that before maybe it wasn't on the internet. Okay. <laughs>